It's the energy that powers the stars. It's the energy that powers the universe. And it can be the energy that powers our civilization. Imagine a source of energy that doesn't produce any carbon emissions or any substantial amount of radioactive waste and is unlimited in its availability, allowing billions of people to have decent standard of living now and forever in the future. There is such a source of energy, and that is fusion energy. It is the power of the sun. It is two light elements put together at extreme pressures and temperatures to release a tremendous amount of energy. I like to think or dream of the impact of fusion, not at a global scale, but at a personal scale. It means that there's never a person who's born whose full potential cannot be unlocked because they're blocked access to energy. The history of economic growth is really a history about getting more and more energy out of our environment, out of our, our lives. As we start to add more and more into our, our energy system, you see economic growth take off. What that means is that there is more availability for everybody. Life gets better. Lifespans get longer. More people can, can come. We want economic growth. We want population growth. We want to see human flourishing. Fusion enables that. With fusion power, it becomes clear that there are no limits, that there's infinite energy, that in fact the source of energy is human creativity itself. When we think about energy, we think about gas, oil, coal, other things pulled from the ground. And when we look around the world, we see conflicts about where this energy comes from. And when we move into a world of fusion energy, it means that energy becomes divorced from that geopolitics and is no longer something that we have to fight for. There are two myths associated with energy. One is that we're running out of energy, and the other is that the more people that there are and the more that they do, the faster we will run out of energy. Both of these are wrong. The fact is the way the universe is constructed, uh, it, it, it will take multiple billions of years to actually run out of energy. Our sun has been working for billions of years and will continue to work for billions of years. Why? Like, where's the thing that keeps the sun glowing? It's actually in the power of the nucleus. And the nucleus is what makes up most of all of matter. The sun unlocks that energy, and that's actually why it runs. It unlocks fusion. All the sources of energy that we've used before, before the nuclear age in any case, whether we're talking about burning wood or burning fossil fuels, have been involved with rearranging the electrons of atoms. And that can release some energy but millions of times more energy can be obtained by rearranging the nuclei of atoms where we tap the nuclear force. When we're talking about the energy within the nucleus, what we're talking about is fusion. Using fusion to access the more than 99% of available energy. And when that happens, it releases a tremendous amount of energy that we can then use for all of the other things that we use energy for here on Earth today. It's still hard for me to get my head around about how we do this. And then not only how we do it at the scale that is required, but at the pace which is required. It might be the greatest challenge we have ever given ourselves as a civilization. If fusion is the ultimate energy source, then what is it? Well, fundamentally, it is a reaction between light elements combining at extreme temperatures and pressures to provide a huge amount of energy. So E equals MC squared tells us that energy and mass are equivalent. They're the same thing. They're just in different forms. And what it tells you is if you want to unlock the most amount of energy, then you deal with the thing that has the most mass. And what has the most mass 
is the nucleus. So we change the nucleus to unlock the largest amounts of energy. That's fusion. There are three things you need for controlled fusion. You need to have the fusion fuel, which can be hydrogen. There needs to be a lot of heat and pressure, and it needs to be contained. Fuel comes freely out of water because water has a, a special form of heavy hydrogen in it called deuterium that we can extract. And it's in all water, it's, and it's inexhaustible. This bottle of water is something like uh, about two or three years of my total energy use. So if we take this special fuel, this heavy hydrogen fuel, and it's a gas, what we do is we get it hot. We get it hot enough that it turns into the soupy mix called a plasma. It's hot enough that it's actually disintegrated the atoms. Now, these nuclei are sort of skirting around, but they have so much en energy, they can actually touch each other. When they touch each other, the fusion reaction can occur. And that temperature is about 100 million degrees Celsius. Different technologies have been thought of and theorized on how to do this. The predominant ones are magnetic confinement with very large, powerful magnets, or inertial confinement with very large, powerful lasers. But there's certainly a whole, whole spectrum and ranges. You must come up with a, a concept that applies a pressure but without physical contact. So the laser does it by the fact that it delivers laser or light energy to provide the compression. And in magnetic confinement, it's an action at a distance that the magnetic field that is produced provides a force that acts on those particles but without, phys without the magnet physically touching it. Whatever containment scheme that you have, it just tends to, by definition, it, 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 it in some sense tricks it into not knowing it's on Earth. What happens is that if anything terrestrial <laughs> happens to touch it, it just immediately cools off because it wants to go back down to room temperature. In fact, it wants to just turn back into a gas again. It's not like we're creating this really dangerous sun next to your house. We're doing something that is literally the safest form of energy. If something happens to that plasma, it's like blowing out a candle, <laughs> goes away. And that's the most important thing. The fail-safe mode for a fusion experiment, it goes off. It turns off. It is the preferred way to produce energy. In order to understand where fusion energy is today, we need to know where it started. And it was over a century ago that scientists first understood how energy was produced in the sun and the stars, and that's fusion energy. The key scientific foundation for nuclear fusion was laid out by Albert Einstein with his famous equation, e equals mc squared, which shows that you can convert mass to energy. Physicists could not understand how the sun could have been around for uh, hundreds of millions of years. Where's the energy coming from? It was Sir Arthur Eddington, in 1920, realized it was coming from nuclear fusion. Now, this set the stage for the discovery of nuclear energy, both fission and fusion. Now, during the uh, 30s and 40s, attention focused on fission because it was the easier one to accomplish. So from the 1950s, when fusion was first shown in the lab, through the 60s, 70s, 80s, countries, scientists, we're building more and more sophisticated fusion experiments, fusion machines. One of the first agreements between the Soviet Union and the United States, agreed by Presidents Reagan and Gorbachev in 1985, was an agreement to move forward together on an international experiment to prove out fusion. And they were getting better and better at getting the temperatures up, getting more energy out, but they never got beyond that moment where you could get more energy out of the experiment than energy in. Scientists knew that if you could crack this code, you would unleash a new age, an era where energy is abundant, energy is cheap, energy is available to all. So there are two major milestones that we hit just in the last several years. One of them was the amount of energy that was being released from the fusion reactions exceeded the amount 
of laser energy that was used to make the compression happen. This happened at the National Ignition Facility in December of 2022. They shot 192 lasers onto a target, literally each laser the most powerful laser on Earth, collapsing the target and in a very, very brief amount of time. More energy went out than energy went onto the target and proved that here we are, fusion can work. For us, this is the Wright Brothers moment. This is the time when the airplane flies. You prove that the airplane flies. It's not yet the time that you're selling the airplane. It's not yet commercial, but we've proved the physics. And the other one which I'd point out was a successful test, a new form of very high-performing magnet that was done at MIT. It was primarily a technology advancement that greatly improved the efficiency of how we make these powerful magnetic fields to steer and contain the hot plasma fuel. The reason for the excitement um, that we have in fusion right now is we've accomplished the science of this. These things that sound almost like science fiction, like 100 million degrees, were achieved in the laboratory quite routinely. For decades, fusion energy was a province of national lab scientists, government research programs, but only in recent years has it moved into the private sector. There is a, a multitude of different companies looking at different ways on how to get there, and investors are backing them because they think they have a way to get to commercialization at speed and then develop faster from there. And these uh, companies are not looking at developing fusion in decades, they're looking at developing fusion this decade within years. This starts off as a curiosity-based, science-driven quest to unlock like the mysteries of the universe. And all of a sudden, once you unlock those, you realize at some point, it's not just about curiosity anymore. It's about delivering <laughs> on, on that promise. And I believe that we have hit that inflection point in fusion. While we pursue fusion, it's really important to realize that this is alongside um, its relative, in a way, fission, which is what we call nuclear power. It actually originates from the same underlying principle, which is that we rearrange nuclei. Fission is taking heavy elements like uranium, plutonium, thorium, and then splitting the atom. So it is a, a way of accessing the huge amount of energy within the nucleus itself. Today, over 30 countries around the world rely significantly on nuclear power. And uh, two examples that are worth considering are France and the United States. France today has completely decarbonized their power grid. They are 75% nuclear, 15% hydroelectric, 10% fossil fuels. In the United States since the 1950s, it's grown to be about 20% of our electricity production. It's the largest source of zero carbon electricity production in the United States and in many developed countries around the world. We know how to do fission now, and we know how to do it safely, and we have the safeguards in place to make sure that it is available. And, and so it's an important pathway no other source of energy in the world can compare to the safety record of nuclear power. Better than the oil industry, for example, or coal mines, um, or even solar panels or windmills. We have to go forward towards sources of energy that can supersede fossil fuels. In part, this can be done with nuclear fission, but the ideal solution is nuclear fusion, because it is unlimited and pollution-free. There are over a billion people on Earth today who have no access to electricity. So to be able to bring clean, safe, abundant energy means that you're able to bring prosperity, longer lifespans, higher economic growth to all these people who are underserved and really have not been a part of the global system. To be able to bring them in really is a game changer. So why do we try something that is as hard scientifically and technically as fusion? So the reason that we do this is because there's so few options on the table. And options for what? To realize that dream of a world that is a very 
clean and is pristine, but actually allows us still to do all the most important things economically and for human well-being that we care about.